The following are excerpts from the book In Search of the Miraculous, Fragments of an Unknown Teaching by P. D. Ouspensky. In this video, Gurdjieff answers questions about war. He discusses what is happening to the general population and also tells us that there is hope for the individual and what to do. The reading begins. There was a question about war. Wars cannot be stopped. War is the result of the slavery in which men live. Strictly speaking, men are not to blame for war. War is due to cosmic forces, to planetary influences. But in men there is no resistance whatever against these influences and there cannot be any because men are slaves. If they were men and were capable of doing, they would be able to resist these influences and refrain from killing one another. But surely those who realize this can do something, said the man who had asked the question about war. If a sufficient number of men came to a definite conclusion that there should be no war, could they not influence others? Gurdjieff replied, those who dislike war have been trying to do so almost since the creation of the world and yet there has never been such a war as the present. Wars are not decreasing, they are increasing and war cannot be stopped by ordinary means. All these theories about universal peace, about peace conferences and so on are again simply laziness and hypocrisy. Men do not want to think about themselves, do not want to work on themselves, but think of how to make other people do what they want. If a sufficient number of people who wanted to stop war really did gather together, they would first of all begin by making war upon those who disagreed with them. And it is still more certain that they would make war on people who also want to stop wars but in another way. And so they would fight. Men are what they are and they cannot be different. War has many causes that are unknown to us. Some causes are in men themselves. Others are outside them. One must begin with the causes that are in man, himself. How can he be independent of the external influences of great cosmic forces when he is the slave of everything that surrounds him? He is controlled by everything around him. If he becomes free from things, he may then become free from planetary influences. Freedom. Liberation. This must be the aim of man. To become free, to be liberated from slavery, this is what a man ought to strive for when he becomes even a little conscious of his position. There is nothing else for him and nothing else is possible so long as he remains a slave both inwardly and outwardly. But he cannot cease to be a slave outwardly while he remains a slave inwardly. Therefore, in order to become free, man must gain inner freedom. The first reason for man's inner slavery is his ignorance and above all, his ignorance of himself. Without self-knowledge, without understanding the working and functions of his machine, man cannot be free, he cannot govern himself, and he will always remain a slave, and the plaything of the forces acting upon him. This is why in all ancient teachings the first demand at the beginning of the way to liberation was, Know thyself. Let us take some event in the life of humanity. For instance, war. There is a war going on at the present moment. What does it signify? It signifies that several millions of sleeping people are trying to destroy several millions of other sleeping people. They would not do this, of course, if they were to wake up. Everything that takes place is owing to the sleep. Both states of consciousness, sleep and the waking state are equally subjective. Only by beginning to remember himself does a man really awaken. And then all surrounding life acquires for him a different aspect and a different meaning. He sees that it is the life of sleeping people a life in sleep. All that men say, all that they do, they say and do in sleep. All this can have no value whatever. Only awakening and what leads to awakening has a value in reality. How many times have I been asked here whether wars can be stopped? Certainly they can. For this it is only necessary that people should awaken. It seems a small thing. It is, however, the most difficult thing there can be because the sleep is induced and maintained by the whole of surrounding life, by all surrounding conditions. How can one awaken? How can one escape the sleep? These questions are the most important, the most vital that can ever confront a man. But before this, it is necessary to be convinced of the very fact of sleep. But it is possible to be convinced of this only by trying to awaken. When a man understands that he does not remember himself and that to remember himself means to awaken to some extent and when at the same time he sees by experience how difficult it is to remember himself, he will understand that he cannot awaken simply by having the desire to do so. It can be said still more precisely that a man cannot awaken by himself. 
But if, let us say, twenty people make an agreement that whoever of them awakens first shall wake the rest, they already have some chance. Even this, however, is insufficient because all the twenty can go to sleep at the same time and dream that they are waking up. Therefore more is still necessary. They must be looked after by a man who is not asleep or who does not fall asleep as easily as they do or who goes to sleep consciously when this is possible when it will do no harm either to himself or to others. They must find such a man and hire him to wake them and not allow them to fall asleep again. Without this it is impossible to awaken. This is what must be understood. The conversation began with my question, can war be stopped? And Gurdjieff answered, yes, it can. And yet I had been certain from previous talks that he would answer, no, it cannot. He continued, but the whole thing is how. It is necessary to know a great deal in order to understand that. What is war? It is the result of planetary influences. Somewhere up there two or three planets have approached too near to each other. Tension results. Have you noticed how, if a man passes quite close to you on a narrow pavement, you become all tense? The same tension takes place between planets. For them it lasts, perhaps, a second or two. But here, on the Earth, people begin to slaughter one another, and they go on slaughtering maybe for several years. It seems to them at the time that they hate one another, or perhaps that they have to slaughter each other for some exalted purpose, or that they must defend somebody or something and that it is a very noble thing to do, or something else of the same kind. They fail to realize to what an extent they are mere pawns in the game. They think they signify something, they think they can move about as they like, they think they can decide to do this or that. But in reality all their movements, all their actions, are the result of planetary influences and they themselves signify literally nothing. Then the moon plays a big part in this. But we will speak about the moon separately. Only it must be understood that neither Emperor Wilhelm, nor generals, nor ministers, nor parliaments signify anything or can do anything. Everything that happens on a big scale is governed from outside and governed either by accidental combinations of influences or by general cosmic laws. People who shout about their patriotism are psychopaths and should be looked upon as such. And how would one look upon pacifists or upon people who refuse to go to the war? Equally as lunatics, they are probably worse. 